cannot wait to dig into all of this. Dan O'Connor from the President and CEO of Frisbee's Pies Company. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Anne. Pleasure to be here. All right, so you single handedly have the history in your hands of this pie company that dates all the way back to 1871 in Bridgeport. That is correct, Anne. How did you get involved with these pies? What happened? Well, it's an interesting story. Where it really came down to is the pie tin, which the Frisbee pie is famous for. Here and the reason the show why, and tell. I is love why I mention that, Anne, is because this was actually the tin that I purchased about 30 years ago. Just for grins. I saw it at a tag sale, and it really caught my eye, and I said, what, what's, what's behind that? What's, what's the story? And, having and so it's, it's printed this way. That's correct. Okay, so you bring this home. Correct. And it sits around it, for 30 years? No, actually, that's just when the story started. So at the time, I was playing what we know today, Frisbee, yep. with the plastic Frisbee, and I said, well, there must be a connection. How does this and this, what, how can this be a Frisbee and this be a Frisbee, and what's the lore and the story I've heard about this Frisbee pie company? So from there, I started collecting what we would say the Frisbee pie memorabilia. Subsequently, just because you were fascinated by because it. Because I thought it was the neatest story. And I was an active player in both Ultimate Frisbee, disc golf, and lots of Frisbee activities, organizing and as well as a player, and I still am today. Now, your family is saying what to you? You're starting to collect pie plates, <laughs> and are they calling for help? What's, what's happening there? That's very funny. Actually, that's a, a good point. Over the years, there's been a few peculiar looks and said, you know, a tin for $20, a tin for 10 well, What's? How could you put that type of value on something that is pretty uh, indiscreet? It's not much to it, but the fact is it does have a lot of history. And at the time, the reception was a little lukewarm, excuse me, but now people really have started make the, making the connections. And I attribute a lot of that to the interest and in the growth of Frisbee as we think about the sports, as well as the desire to look back and find a little bit about our history. Because back in the day, kids used to throw these. That is correct. And then this college campuses figured out. They yeah. were taking part as well. So it started, the story is, and it's, it started with the plant, the workers in the back throwing the tins around. And if you think about a tin or something like this coming at you, you'd probably yell, hey, watch out. Well, that's where, hey, Frisbee coming in, Frisbee, watch out, watch out. And as it went from the on-site at the bakery to the college campuses, and particularly right in our backyard here is at Yale, at the University of Bridgeport, Connecticut College, it spread onto the college campuses. Back in the day. Back in the day. So we think of 30s into the 40s, throwing the Frisbee, throwing a pie tin Frisbee around, which coincidentally at the time as plastics and other forms came, they were another gentleman was working on a plastic Frisbee. And as the popularity and this was going on in the Northeast up in Connecticut, a lot of activity was going on in the West Coast. And in 1957, give or take, right around that time frame, one of the marketing managers at a company called Whammo, which was a, new Whammo, yep. was a new company at the time, happened to be up in the Northeast looking around what's hot, some of the hot toys going on. You think about a Northeast tour, toys you know, traveling around, seeing what's hot, what's trendy, and there they were, the kids on campus throwing around and yelling Frisbee. And that journey led back to California again in the 1956-57 time frame where the gentleman approached the brand that being what was called at the time the Pluto Platter Flying Saucer and said what do you think about naming it the Frisbee? Again not knowing much about their background or the connection soon after and I speak in literally months as a testimony in the autobiography of Fred Morrison who developed the Frisbee when they renamed the Frisbee or the Pluto Platter excuse me to the Frisbee it became a overnight sensation within months they were making as many as they could possibly keep starting up starting with. with a pie that goes back to that, 1871. That part of it started with a pie the name and the connection is right to Bridgeport Connecticut and particularly to Connecticut. As, so as you well. spent your life working for a lot of companies. Um, you, you collected this now let's fast forward you're now the CEO and president of this pie company. How, that did, is how did that happen? You said, I'm going to buy the pie company. <laughs> well, it didn't quite happen as quickly or as uh, overnight as that. It took several years, actually. The idea was festering. I, I did my research and had, to your point, some background to understand the marketing, sales, and distribution aspects and asked the right questions and spoke to the right people. And lo and behold, an opportunity came where I was able to uh, 
get the licensing and distribution rights for the Frisbee brand, of which part and parcel became the pies and some of the other opportunities that I'm now, now exploring as well. Let's go through some of the pictures that down memory lane sure. of the Frisbee Pie Company. Sure. All right, this is in uh, on Kasuth Street in Bridgeport. This was back in the day. That is correct. This actually would have been the actual final location of the Frisbee Pie Company as we know it because the original storefront, and I believe you may have the picture, and if you don't, I will make sure that you get it, where we actually have the employees. As a matter of fact, I believe it's in this book. We'll go, not, we have a keep lot. Moving. Yeah, yep, let's keep go. moving. Yep. So, so, so um, that, is the, that is, as we know it, the Frisbee Pie Company on Kasu Street and the popularity, and that was the home of the Frisbee, as we know it, the Frisbee Pie Company, in from the late 30s into the 1950s at that location. Circa what year are we looking at here? This is, I'm looking at 19, it's in the mid-30s. The reason why I say that, this was captured in a some of my archives and this was from about 1936 and slightly earlier the reason why I say it it captures the picking room where they were actually picking the fruits for the pies and the it just get an idea of the uh, the the workmanship that went into these wonderful pies speaking of pies this is about the same era or is this later that, that is correct that's probably right around that time frame as well maybe a couple years later again maybe mid to late 30s and back then how many pies were they cranking out in a year well in the 30s and 40s, they were probably in the thousands uh -huh. per week. By the time they were fully up and running into the mid-40s into the early 50s, they were doing 10,000 pies a day. And distribution was how far? It was Providence, Rhode Island, Hartford, Connecticut. They had an outlet, I believe, up in Poughkeepsie, New York. So you really had the Northeast, and of course, with the Bridgeport location as the, as the original or f the founding location, they were able to spread for throughout most of New England from that from that so location. So everybody knew Frisbee's pies. The Frisbee pies were known throughout Northeast for their quality, their distribution, and the just enjoyment of them as well. Going back to distribution, uh, how did this work out with the horse and the and the buggy, as it were? Yes. Well, these are some of the early photographs of how their delivery system was, and from horse and buggies in the early days. I put this in the probably 1907, 1908. Wow. So if you can imagine, but important to them, look at the pride and the, the craftsmanship and the detail and the lettering that they really felt it was important to get their branding out there on beautiful horses and buggies, as well as as we move into the early 20s, late teens, where we actually have the automobile that is now delivering as well. I actually want to possess that. That's a really, that's a really neat truck. Then we have a whole bunch of trucks that are lining some street. Is this yep. in Bridgeport? This is in Bridgeport, exactly. So right around the corner from Casu Street, which is where they were located, they were actually in a position where they transitioned over from what were stables now to the actual automobile. So you can see a fleet of here. We've got about, oh, six beautifully ready to go, hit the, tra hit, the, hit the road delivering the trucks with the delivery trucks. So that gives you an idea of how they were expanding. And the reason why I say it, as they're the pinnacle of their operation, there were hundreds of trucks on the road. This is all just very fascinating Isn't how a company is So it is really built. is. And you can see the infrastructure, how important it, it was to Oh, them. absolutely. Yeah. Um, this is what year do we think here? I would put this at probably the late 40s, early 50s. Okay. And uh, the reason why I say it just on the engine and the style, and it's a, it's a larger truck. So as their operation got larger, the trucks were getting bit, bigger and a little more, uh, how would you say, uh, automation. So you had that part At one going. point, how many people did they employ? Do you know? Hundreds, there, thousands? Oh, there were hundreds, yeah. Okay. So if you think about being a fresh operation and they had pickers with the fruits, and so they employed throughout the region to gather and bring the fruits as well as the bakers on site and the delivery. So in the hundreds, if not close to a thousand, I would say. Now, is sure. this yours these days? This is. This is actually the, uh, the latest. Uh, this is actually a truck. This is a 1936 panel truck. So 1936, you get a glimpse of what this looks like relative to the other pictures we were just sharing. So you can kind of see the timeline. This is probably right, again, in the middle of, the, of their tremendous operation versus the horse and buggies a little earlier. This is a restored Frisbee pie truck, which is actually in, in my possession and is part and of And you my just drive it around for fun, or do you <laughs> deliver it at sometimes? Well, the great thing about it, it's really just hitting the road. And its first delivery was on the road back in early December. So it's only, not only the company were eight weeks old, but actually the delivery truck, which has just got online, 
again early December, so about eight weeks now. So yeah. you, you're you're brand new, and I'm telling you, this is nostalgic, and people love love this stuff. I, and I know you've gotten a lot of press on this, so it's it's part of going back to the past to find the future, and you're doing a good job of that. I well, thank you. I want to show yeah. some some more folks now. Oh, great! Are these delivery guys. This certainly is, and this these are some tremendous. Uh, if you think about, and I, what I love about the pictures is the pride, the happy, and they're they're on their way to delivering some pies and you can see just behind the gentleman is the frisbee pie truck which we mentioned probably mid 40s uh, excuse me mid 30s early 40s as well as another great shot as well so these are actually the delivermen the delivery men excuse me and if you think about the delivery hat oh, and you've got yep. we've got a and hat right here let's let's sure what year is this so this would be a mid 30s vintage hat okay. with the frisbee logo and where'd you find really this a few just antiquing around the northeast, and uh, this actually was upstate Connecticut, coming back from a uh, trip up, up north. So. And you could actually feed your family and and, and have a um, a full time business as del a delivery man for this pie company. Oh, right? absolutely, absolutely. And Our, um, yeah. And we have a couple more pictures. One um, sure. of the pie plate again. Oh, great! Yes. And then we go right into the frisbees that that you talked about on college yes. campuses, and there's something called disc golfer and the ultimate frisbee. That is correct. Which you you kick around in the yard a lot with the with the frisbees. Well, it's a little more uh, than just kicking around the yard or the park for that matter. These are actually professional disc golf tournaments, and they're national and at this point international. So we see an expansion of not only disc that being frisbee disc golf, right. but also ultimate frisbee. And both in their own rights are relatively young sports. And are you sponsoring that through the Frisbee Pie Company? How, how as, does that work? As a matter of fact, and that is, uh, this is my year, and being new, this was an opportunity that has presented itself. So I will be sponsoring, and I've sponsored local events, but this actually gives me an opportunity to sponsor a national event. So there's the give back piece. Exactly. So now, you hit it. along the way, you find this. Now, we talked about th 30 years ago, you find the pie plate. Yes. Then you find this. And this happens to be, um, we're not going to go through all of this, yep. but this sure. is the, the, the corporate uh, book, as it were, sure. that was in, in the uh, organization in to the, show people what they did in, in yeah. their business. With hand printed, or I should say hand typed notes oh, yeah. about what's going on. So this is Joseph. Frisbee, who was the president of the company from about 1904 to 1940, early 1940s. Something was leading you to this moment, <laughs> all of this stuff. Um, also, you, you uh, brought this, and this is a layout of the original factory? That is correct. So a gentleman who I had an opportunity to meet with over the last couple of weeks presented this to me as an artifact of where he worked, a 97-year-old gentleman that is remembering and sharing with me these emotional connections and and took the time to share this diagram of how wow. the baker is laid out and took such pride and and felt so and I felt honored to be in his presence and his daughter's presence and it was a, just a wonderful afternoon so yes that was his uh, contribution so you're, to the you're digging deep into history absolutely now we find out there's a book coming out yes. tell me about this and what does it come out yep and interesting enough I had the opportunity through this effort and getting the frisbee pies back in uh, into the uh, awareness and through that effort there is a family uh, genealogy group, and they're called the Frisbees and the Frisbees family. They, ironically, have been putting together a book about the Frisbee Pie Company, not knowing that I was working in tandem to bring back the company itself. So now we're at an opportunity to work together. I'm going to share some information, some photos, as well as the work they've done. Our plan right now is to have this published and ready to go for early fall time frame. So You're September, going to have to October. change your last name from O'Connor to Frisbee. <laughs> You're becoming a family That's member. <laughs> now, all right, so you, you get the business going, you're licensing the name, you're, you're running it. Now, here comes these pies. And uh, I said to you, I love the packaging because it looks like something out of the 1920s, 30s, 40s. Um, and you're working with a graphic artist guy who is doing this. Comes in three flavors, blueberry, apple, and cherry. Yep. You're going to keep just those three flavors? We will have line extensions. We are looking at... I love at that line extensions. Exactly. We, uh, we're excited to bring not only possibly in the snack size or the four-inch pie, but we're also evaluating a larger full-size restaurant, large family size, which could be an eight or a nine-inch pie. So Dependent. something for the holidays, something for the spring, and that is uh, close to happening. Now so we're these, very close to these it. These are about in four places right now, but they're going to go online. 
We'll have them available online, and I'm working again as a relative new company with only about eight weeks into it. I'm we're, rushing you. We're, we're, <laughs> we're looking for opportunities to expand that distribution, so I'm excited that there will be some news shortly to support that effort. So it'll be available at more convenience stores, more delis, and really have the opportunity to share more of these, what I believe are delicious pies. So we're going to get these national. Uh, These little na babies? Nationally is going to be somewhere, but oh, come on, online, think online for sure, which I think is national, and certainly distribution within a nice uh, nice geography. See how it does. Let's see how it does and, ex and, and, and go from there. So you, you're um, an old new company. What kind of joy is this bringing you at this stage of your life with all the things that you've done? You're in the yep. middle of nostalgia. Um, you're bringing this company back. What, what <laughs> think about every day? It, it, it's so true. It, it it touches so many emotions because of the enjoyment, the enjoyment that I get from it. That being an active participant of the sports, and then to bring the history, and to see the response of those that remember the company, and those that I compete with, and enjoy as friends, their excitement to see the activity behind it. So it really gives me a sense of of pride and the excitement that people are genuinely interested from those that work in the company, that know about the company from historical roots, as well as those that I've interacted and played with as a competing member of the Frisbee community. And it's all started with pie. Yeah, absolutely. Dan O'Connor, I wish you so much luck, and thank you so much for coming in well, thank and you, bringing Anne. this awesome company back. I do appreciate that. Thank you so much. You bet. Spend all night kissing and a bump is right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetrack to find my solution and find the piece of the door, but it's also a metaphor. Things keep locked in the grocery store of the mind. Just at the same time, I skip right ahead in the nice ride. The harder we look, the less we can see. Don't you know, you know, you know that you need me.